Hey guys, Mr. Lock and Load here. I'm going to do a video. You know, this is pretty much all the way done, but I figured, hell, I might as well make a video of this. I'm just going through uh, doing a 5,000 round cleanup on, on the Glock 22. I do have quite a bit of experience with the Glock, and I've tried different parts, so we're going to talk a little bit about it. But basically what what's going on is guns are like cars doesn't matter how awesome of a car you have or a truck if you don't change the oil you're not going to get the potential life out of it that you can same thing especially dealing with a farm like a Glock it's very simple it's a robust design but there are parts that need changing and the cool thing about it is they're cheap these parts are not very expensive at all you can get your Glock fully after 5,000 rounds of shooting cleaned up ready to go for under 20 bucks the things like Legos, I know guys are going to ask me to, can you tell us how to take it apart? It's pretty simple, guys. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of videos out there. Let's just talk about some of these parts I'm going to replace. Number one, going with the slide. Starting with the slide. Whatever kind of spring system guide rod kit you got. This was the old one. Factory Glock 22, plastic and steel. I mean, nothing too crazy there. They work. They're awesome, combat effective. I don't like plastic though when dealing with this. Uh, I'm, I'm not into a polymer guide rod at all. So what have I done? Well, on the Glock 27, I tried this Fire Dragon. This thing did not work at all. I don't know if I got a bad one, but it was a complete failure. You would stick it in that it could not go into battery. It could not function. You could not pull it back far enough to slide back enough to chamber around. It just didn't work. Don't quite understand what's going on there. For this guy, I first tried, of course, I went with the most expensive. Um, I was told that this was the cat's meow, and I'm like, all right, I'll fork out the 60 bucks. Springco U USA. It was supposed to be combat effective, uh, but with awesome take up and recoil and power and level 5, Delta 9, and it was a complete waste too. I'm looking for combat fighting handgun. I want combat reliability. This to me isn't a gimmick, this is very useful, but in a competitive shooter setting. To me, this, it works, it does work. Um, I have a video where I, where I had an extremely fast, well-placed hammer pair, and I was using this system, I had just stuck it into the slide. Um, the problem with it is, especially if I had loaded mags, and if this thing got dirty, uh, fully loaded mags, it would have a hard time stripping a round off the magazine after it ejected the, the shell out and uh, going to full battery. It, uh, probably every mag to every other mag, I was having multiple issues where I would have to manually reset by hitting back of the slide and setting the round or it would go into some sort of double double feed and I would have to clean it all up. That's not what I want for a combat handgun. Okay. So what I went is I have done a lot of research and it was fairly inexpensive. One of these Aerotech uh, titanium guide rods. I bought one of those and I got a Glock factory spring. Put it together. We're going to see. So that's what I'm rocking now. Just trying it out. Um, with that I got a wild hair up my ass and decided to try one of these guys out. This is a Wilson Combat recoil buffer. I, I use recoil buffers, the polyurethane type, on my AKs and I have thousands of rounds through this one in particular. I have probably 6,000 rounds through it and it is holding up absolutely fine. No cracks, nothing. So I figured hell, this wasn't that expensive. I'll pick one up. And the way that these work is, all this is is to keep metal on metal contact. Drop your barrel in. Whatever kind of spring system you have normally would just go in there. Alright, well this guy fits like a glove. Snaps right into place. Inexpensive. We'll see if it works. We'll see. I have no guarantees and I kind of look at eh, more or less a gimmick right now, but we'll see uh, tomorrow. So, 
that's our first part. Uh, that'll be the most expensive part. The second part is uh, the spring-loaded bearings, which are these little plastic guys. Uh, replace those. They're too cheap not to. This one, the old one, is all flared up and worn down. Second thing, I'm going to be... <sighs> To be honest with you guys, this doesn't need replacing a whole lot in my ideology, in my in my mind. Um, what this is is this is uh, just a channel liner. This goes inside of the slide, and when you stick your firing pin in, this is covering up the spring um, and the majority of the body on the firing pin. Uh, it keeps it clean. It pretty much acts as it's self uh, lubricating in in a way you don't need to put oil in here. Uh, don't put any oil or gunk in here, it'll just collect crap. A um, couple bucks, replace it. Second thing, this is, or one of the last things, this is a must. Uh, in my eyes, every time that you open up your Glock fully and you disassemble and do a full uh, de a detailed clean on it, this guy, this trigger spring, this is the weakest part in a Glock. But the cool thing is, I'll demonstrate tomorrow, is you don't need this part to function. If you're teaching a new shooter, remove this spring. I'll show you tomorrow. This is very unique to this firearm, but this is the most uh, <clears throat> potential destructive piece that, that is inside of the Glock, in my uh, <clears throat> professional opinion. The way that this goes is I already have the new one installed. Locks around. Locks on your trigger block, goes on to your trigger bar, just like this, and this gives you a defined reset. This will actually uh, make sure that your firearm is set and ready to go. If you master your trigger, though, you don't need that, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. But if it's coming out, guys, um, replace it. They're like $2 a spring. The old Glock ones were a really metallic, shiny silver, from my understanding. The new ones are a grayer color. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, the darker, grayer one is a little bit heavier and will make a little bit stronger of a trigger pull, but it is a stronger spring. So weigh out your options. I went ahead after I had one of these guys break. It was a Wolf replacement. Um, after about 4,000 rounds, it was 3,700 rounds or so, the spring broke off. And I was still trained with my pistol the whole day, uh, understanding the concept of it. But I would hate for that to happen in a combat scenario, so I'm going to go ahead and buy the strong, uh, darker ones. And that's pretty much it on the Glock. When you're going through it, check over all your little pieces. Go over and look at your connector. Give it a fine go over. Make sure it just looks correct. Make sure it looks right the way it's supposed to. Trigger bar, same thing. You're going to see where. You're going to see parts where, especially if you shoot the handgun. I have over 5,000 rounds through, through this gun. I hope it shows where. Your trigger blocks. Or your trigger uh, <coughs> housings. These guys are plastic, and especially here on the back portion of it, where the spring grabs onto, that's a potential wear place. I think these are like 10 bucks, 8 bucks. If it starts to really wear, replace it. It's not that expensive. Going through them looking for cracks, especially on a 40 caliber handgun, 40 10 mil. They are high velocity, hard hitting, hard abusive cartridges something to understand. These locking blocks, they're strong, but when you have metal on metal contact, something's going to give eventually. So just understand that and don't be afraid to take apart your gun and give it a good cleaning and a good look through. I did buy a couple extra parts. I uh, didn't need to buy this. This is the Punisher uh, back plate, slide plate, it's aluminum. I just kind of wanted a metal one and I said hell I was gonna get the don't tread on me but something about the Punisher just set me off. I don't really recommend it because it's gonna be a defensive gun uh, if you engage somebody and your weapons going to be taken, e taken even if you are 100% in the right and the judge is gonna look at you and go huh 
Just something to think about. Making it look evil. It's the choice that I make for myself. AK, man. I've, I've done some stuff on the AK. I did thread the barrel. Uh, it's 14-1 uh, left hand. It's pretty simple, pretty basic. Uh, I just threaded this guy a couple days ago. And I have an American-made, uh, I believe it's a Tapco slant on it. And, and I do like the look of that slant muzzle brake. I think it's traditional AK-47, and it works. The philosophy, the, the science behind it works. You got this big chunk of steel coming back to the right. Now, if you're right-handed shooter, you have recoil coming up to the right. This slant is angled to the upper right, so it'll blow gases that way, pushing your muzzle to the uh, lower left. And it works. So, first time shooting it like that will be tomorrow. And I have an extra 5.52 laying around. I've been thinking what to do with this. I got the other EOTech on the other AK, and I've been liking this iron sights, but. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I have an, I bought an Ultimac, actually it was a Christmas gift, Ultimac uh, gas tube. We're going to see, guys love this thing. To me, I still see the heat issue involved with it. Uh, going with any, any part of the farm that gets hot, I'm mounting an optic to it is not a good idea. So with that being said, I'm not an Aimpoint fan. I like the reticle of an EOTech, it's just for me. So where's my compromise? I got one of these guys, I'm going to try it out. I'm telling you, I like the craftsmanship. I like the strength of it. I like the looks of it. And I, and most importantly, like the weight of it. It's strong but light. I'm digging this so far. We'll set it up and see how it goes. With that, though, I want to be able to easily take this guy off because I don't fully trust that this optic in an extended, long firefight a defensive posture is going to last. I don't know. There's just so much heat going on here. I'm not sure. So what did I do? I got a GG and G quick release. There's my pretty much my solution. If it goes down, let it fall on the ground. I don't know. That's that's about it. Uh, an AK-47 was not designed for the, for these type of optics. Yeah, I've I've tried every way that you can mount that there's systems out to mount a whatever kind of reflex sight or a scope on it it's not designed for it it's just not it's pure as simple as that so I'm making do with what I got but that's about it guys uh, I did get some of these GG and G lens covers we're gonna see uh, I've heard that they're a gimmick and I've heard that they work wired wrong uses a, a pair on his AR and he loves them he says they're they're awesome. So we're going to see. I don't know. So I got some new gear to try out. I'm going to be uh, do put some round down range with the team tomorrow. We're going to be doing some snow training. We just got our first snow. So that'll be a good time. Hopefully I will have many videos up tomorrow. As always, thank you for the support. Thank you for what you're doing. I will talk to you guys later. Have some videos up this weekend.